The Balkans, a region in Europe that has suffered under harsh dictators and recent conflict. But today, it's an area in peace, waiting for tourists to come discover its charms. I've come here during a month dedicated by charity to resolving men's health issues. So in this spirit, I'm embarking on a journey to discover what it is to be masculine. Straight from the mouths of some of the manliest men. Boxers, wrestlers, cops, rally racers, chopper mechanics, and a few surprises thrown in the mix. Here I'll splash, explore, fight, and engage in undescribable activities to get to the root of my gender's essence. A trip that will take me to a place that has seen the worst of male behavior. But from the ruins of that tragedy, a new generation is looking to change the definition of what it takes to be a man. I'm Jonathan Legg. I'm an explorer, a globetrotter on a continual quest for the unusual, exotic, and adventurous side of life. My destination is the core, the very beating heart of a place. It's the search for the wildest, most unpredictable experiences. Moments that widen, and deepen our perspective of the world we live in. What happens on our journey, I don't know. But one thing I do know is this, we're sticking to the road less traveled. Albania enjoys a rich, diverse and dramatic history, original home of the various Illyrian tribes and later part of the Greek and Roman empires. But the story gets real interesting as World War II begins. Hitler annexes Austria and makes a surprise advance on Czechoslovakia. Benito Mussolini feels like he's falling under a German shadow, so he quickly moves on Albania taking control of the country in 1939. The country remains under Axis control until the communists come and seize power. Now many Albanians flee back to Italy, their former marauders, to avoid the harsh policies of the new regime. All this Italian influence from invading armies to returning refugees is evident in the country today. In Mussolini's fascist architecture, and in the cuisine. Albanian is an Indo-European language sharing a branch with none other. It's a language isolate. Beautiful, but a little tricky to pick up. Kenny, Kenny, aqua avec your gas. Here is where the Italian influence comes in handy. It'll get you by. Now let's go back to the communist era, which has a resonating effect on Albania up to this day. This bizarre structure was built to honor Enver Hoxha, who ran the state for decades under a Stalinistic totalitarian regime. After the fall of communism, the building passed through several hands none of which bothered with upkeep, obviously. There's talk of demolishing this old structure, which I think would be a mistake. We need to remember our past and learn from it. The pyramid is a far cry from Bucharest's big communist structure, which also sucked up funds while your average citizen struggled. But the palace of the parliament is still utilized and maintained. Tirana's pyramid on the other hand, sits dilapidated and unloved. But while he was alive, he did build some things. 750,000 things to be exact, amounting to one for every four citizens. Bunkers. Spread over Albania like mushrooms in a damp forest. Each of these ubiquitous structures 
was designed to withstand a full tank assault. Like many dictators, Enver Hoxha was convinced in his paranoia that someone was going to attack. Maybe NATO, most likely the USSR. Albania was becoming an insular place under his rule. No religion, no foreign travel, forget about free press. These guys were designed so that citizens could hunker down, but also fight back during an invasion. You can see a gun mount right here. But they also had the effect of putting the national psyche even more on edge. Imagine living in a place where no dissent is tolerated. There are secret police everywhere. And all the time you have to walk by these bunkers with dark slits of sniper windows open to you. No armies ever came, and eventually the enemy within crumbled and fell. But now, what are you going to do with all these bunkers? Some were dragged away using Chinese T-59 tanks. But in large, that's a good question. Just like that pyramid, they are eyesores to many modern Albanians, a reminder of a past they'd like to forget.